you that I uh, welcome you here this evening to our Prostate Cancer Awareness uh, Day event, if you will, of the Brockton Area NAACP, Good Samaritan Medical Center, and the Admi Tech Foundation are the sponsors of the program. I'd like to introduce to you uh, uh, Bishop Tony Branch, uh, who will give us an invocation. Bless you, every bless everyone in this house today. If you could stand on your feet, because we're going to give God his due. The murder of 17 individuals in Parkland, Florida. We need to know God. Amen? Amen. We're here for prostate cancer, but I would be remiss if we didn't say something about those families, school teachers as well as students that were murdered, that were taken, here, taken from us. And I heard some say that, well, you know, they're in a good place. But let me tell you something about violence. There's never a good time or place to go when it comes to violence. Say amen. amen. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of the Jesus that I serve, we thank you for the assemblance of thy people in this place. Lord, we're here because we know that you are the physicians of physicians. We're here because we know that you can impartake into a scientist to solve the issue of prostate cancer. Lord, we ask that those particular blessings come down from heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Father God, bless the food that we're now about to receive. May you provide strength in our bodies for Christ's sake, we pray. Amen again. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, the incidence of uh, prostate cancer in Rockton and Plymouth County is, as Dr. Stern would say, unacceptable. It's the, it's the largest uh, incidence of uh, prostate cancer happens in Plymouth County and Rockton uh, uh, more than any other district or region in the state. And unfortunately, uh, uh, black men are, are a multiple times uh, at risk, at greater risk of getting prostate cancer. But we believe that early detection will save lives. And it is because we want to advocate early detection that we are and have for the last three years in partnership with Admitech and Good, a good a Samaritan Medical Center, advocating and holding events, encouraging men and women, yes, women too, because it is a family problem when our men are at risk of prostate cancer. And so we want families to join together in the effort to have our men making certain that they visit their doctors, get their PSA exam and their digital rectal examination to determine how at risk they are. We know that all men be they black or white, are at risk if they're over age 40 or over, most over age 50, if they have African American descent or a, a Hispanic descent, and if they have a history of prostate cancer in, the, in their family. So it's an omnipresent problem. Now three years ago, Leona Martin and I uh, were at the North, uh, New England area conference meeting, and we had the distinct pleasure of meeting Dr. Stern, Dr. Fana Stern, when she presented to all uh, members of the New England Area Conference the emergency of prostate cancer uh, among our New England uh, states, and particularly Ma Massachusetts. Uh, and after the meeting, we, and particularly uh, uh, Leona, took the opportunity to to address uh, Dr. Stern and say, we need to do something about this issue here in Brockton. And because the owner introduced me to Dr. Stern, and I brought, uh, and we brought it back to our executive committee in Brockton, for the last three years we have been putting on programs, uh, introducing the need for uh, men to be uh, uh, screened early for prostate cancer. This is a marathon, not uh, a short distance run. And it takes 
a community. It takes a big effort, and it takes vigilance uh, and determination and con to continue to encourage people to come out. It's not easy to have people come out and, and say, hey, you might have a problem, and we want to let you know that uh, uh, we can be of help. So it's going to take us a while, but we have a great foundation. We have a great foundation because we have the mayor of the city, the city, the city council, our state representatives, uh, uh, our state senate, senators, supporting our effort. Now, I could go on, but I'm not the highlight. <laughs> the person who succeeded me was William Brewer, but, and William Brewer was our president at the, at the NAACP for a very short term. But what he did was provide an opportunity for you and me and all of us throughout the community to be led by one, a fascinating woman whom I've known for many, many years. Uh, and I want to tell you, she's found her stride. Uh, and we are blessed for her stride in all that is to come. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to the new president of the Brockton area branch of the NAACP, Ms. Phyllis Ellis. Very nice. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. <laughs> the Brock and Arrow Branch is very proud to partner with Admi Tech and uh, Good Samaritan. Uh, this is a very important issue. Can you hear me? It's not just uh, just for guys. It's for the whole family because I'm sure each of us have known or do know someone who has prostate cancer. And the purpose of the um, event today is to introduce you to new procedures in prostate care. We have a great program lined up for you. We have great speakers as Mayor Carpenter, Claire Cronin, Jerry Cassidy, and even um, Willie May later on today. And of course, Dr. Stern, okay? Um, but we also wanted to, it's, although it's very serious, we wanted to bring some fun or some stuff to the uh, event. So we have great raffle prizes for you guys. So if you have not received a raffle ticket, please come see me or Leona Martin. We have a City of Champion jacket. We have Celtic tickets for the Hornets on February 28th. We have a Kevin McHale cap, which <coughs> Coach May is going to bring later. And we also have manicures. Now, when I go get my nails done, I see men up in there now. So it's not just for women, it's for men. So if you happen to pull a manicure, it might be for your significant other or for yourself. But today, we are here to talk about a very serious issue. And the first up is none other than Mayor Carpenter. Uh, I've been introduced a lot of times, and I don't think I've ever been described as fascinating. So. <laughs> I guess I've still got some work to do. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, and I, I want to first make sure that I thank and acknowledge Admi Tech and Good Samaritan and the NAACP for this ongoing campaign uh, to change the numbers uh, around prostate cancer. And uh, I've lost a good friend to prostate cancer. I have another one that's fighting prostate cancer right now. And so this does impact everyone. And I did really appreciate uh, Steve's comment that not only this is a public health issue, a public health epidemic right now uh, in cities like Brockton, but it's also a family issue. And whether we're talking about breast cancer or we're talking about prostate cancer, these are family medical issues that impacts everybody in the family. Uh, everyone is a, a dad, a brother, a son, a mother, a daughter, a sister. And uh, I, I lost my mother to cancer when she was only 53 years old. So I know what impact that has. Uh, so it's, it's not an individual, it's, it's a family that suffers when someone is hit. And with prostate cancer, you know, the fact of the matter is right now that men of color are two and a half times more likely to die of prostate cancer than white men are. And uh, we need to do something about that. And that's what this campaign, I think, is all about. And so I think like many public health crises, like the opioid epidemic, like domestic violence, awareness and early intervention are the best strategies to change the outcomes. 
and I think that's also true with prostate cancer. So I mean, if you're over, if you're a male over 50 and you don't know your PSA number, you ought to go find out what your PSA number is. And uh, I know there's lots of things I should be doing to take better care of myself that I don't, but I do do this. I do get my exam every year. Um, so uh, I encourage every man, every resident of Brockton, everywhere, to just um, make sure that they take what really is not a lot of time to make sure that every single year they're being screened uh, so that if you are unfortunate enough to be one of the ones that deals with this, we get it early and help us with the awareness campaign. I think much like the opioid crisis, there's a little bit of stigma to prostate cancer uh, detection. And we got to get the stigma out of it because we're talking about saving lives. So um, it's an honor for me to be here and be part of the program. And Phyllis to the NAACP, I again just thank you so much for taking the leadership role and taking this challenge on with your healthcare partners and making sure that we change the numbers and change the outcomes uh, with prostate cancer. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mayor Carpenter. You know, uh, Mayor Carpenter has been at uh, three or four uh, events uh, today, and it's quite a job that he is doing, and, and quite a task to go from one event to another and be so uh, uh, eloquent and elegant uh, when, he, when, he, when he speaks. Like Not that. fascinating. Very, very, <laughs> <laughs> very, very yeah. impressed. We have a, we have a marvelous, marvelous leader. And, Let's, let's again give uh, uh, Mayor Bill Cobb a round of applause. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Bill. And, and uh, thank you for the people that, uh, that support you. Darren, Darren Duwatt is, is here as Chief of Staff, and uh, I can say, too, that I've known Darren for many, many years, and what a wonderful person he is. And I, I, I think you haven't had an opportunity to meet him in the networking tonight. Uh, please get around to, to uh, talk. Talk to Darren. He's a he's a fascinating individual. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have to go there. <laughs> I'll concede that he's fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> you can't uh, fight the battle against uh, prostate cancer on a statewide basis uh, without the help uh, of the of the state and, and state funding. Uh, and in order to get state funding, you have to have representatives from your district that believe in the, in the task that, that is at hand. We have some of the most fascinating <laughs> representatives in the whole state. Uh, and again, I've had the pleasure of knowing them for a number of, of years. And they are here today, Ms. Claire Cronin, and uh, uh, Mr. Jerry Cassidy. And I would like if, uh, if Claire and, and Jerry could come to the podium and maybe give us an idea of what it takes to uh, get s uh, support and funding uh, at the state level during these difficult times. Uh, and ladies and gentlemen, if you don't rise uh, to your feet to, uh, to, apl uh, to applaud, please give a rousing applaud for these Representatives Jerry Cassidy and Claire Cronin. Thank you very much. It is my great pleasure and honor to be here today. I want to thank Abney Tech. Uh, your work is just beyond words. Uh, what you have done has made a, such a great difference to so many in this area. Um, also, Good Samaritan, the Brockton area NAACP. Uh, when we're trying to tackle this problem, it does take a village. Uh, we know that African American men are disproportionately affected by prostate cancer. We know that in Brockton, we have a higher rate uh, than we do in other areas of the state. So it really does take an awful lot uh, for us to combat this problem. One of the big things that we have to focus on is an awareness. At the state level, we have made a commitment that we are going to support uh, programs like Abney Tech 
that support uh, awareness of this disease, early testing, early detection. Uh, and we have made that commitment in the legislature and in the last two legislative cycles, we have worked very hard to secure this funding. At this time, though, I think when you talk about it, we always work uh, as a team, this delegation, but I think we have to give a real extra special shout out to Jerry Cassidy, Representative Cassidy, who has carried the budget amendment for this funding. Uh, we have joined with Representative Cassidy, but uh, he's the one leading the charge on this and has really done uh, an extraordinary uh, job in securing this funding for this very important stuff. So with that, I will turn the microphone owner to the carrier of the Prostate Cancer Awareness Amendment, Jerry Cassidy. Steve, Steve, I think you uh, missed out that uh, she is fascinating. I, I tell you. Claire, Claire is just a phenomenal person, I tell you. Uh, we, we grew up together, and uh, she is now chairwoman of judiciary, which is a, a huge, huge bill that we're, we're dealing with in the state. And uh, it's just unbelievable for Brockman to have Claire uh, uh, sitting next to me in the uh, chamber. And uh, she introduced me to Dr. Stern a couple of years ago, and that was an amazing event up at the uh, Shaw Center. And uh, you've, you've changed my life as far as uh, the disparity between uh, uh, black men and white, uh, white uh, regarding prostate cancer. And uh, it's just been amazing uh, uh, that uh, we're working with you to save lives in Brockton. And, and uh, as Steve said on the cable the other day, it's not, um, you know, we're dealing with lives here in Brockton and we're saving brothers' lives here in Brockton. We're all uh, on the same page here working with uh, the Chairman of Ways and Means. Hopefully, we'll, uh, uh, we're working to change language and uh, uh, the monetary uh, value of it. And uh, April 12th, we have the uh, Prostate Cancer Awareness Day at the State House. Everybody here is invited to uh, uh, come. We have a Speaker DeLeo, he's, he's speaking, Chairman uh, Sanchez, and of course, our champion, of Brockton, uh, uh, Phyllis Ellis. She's gonna be there. She'll be fascinating. She'll be one of the speakers. <laughs> Uh, I'm just a mediocre, I guess. <laughs> so uh, with that, I just want to say, Dr. Stern, thank you very much, and Admi Tekken, the Brockton NAACP, for uh, uh, working with us as uh, Voices on Beacon Hill, where uh, uh, champions are for you. Thank you. Thank you, Claire and, and, and Jerry. Thank you, thank you, thank you. At this time, uh, we are going to, to hear from, uh, from Dr. Stern. And uh, Do Dr. would you please uh, uh, come forward? It has certainly been a blessing in, in my life and, and in our lives uh, to have this wonderful woman in our, in our presence and uh, to have had her dedicate uh, the, uh, the war against prostate cancer in Brockton and Plymouth County. And what a blessing it is for us at the NAACP to have been introduced to her and to her uh, organization. She's a wonderful doctor, a wonderful person. And I'd like to take a moment to just to, uh, read from a program a little of her bio. And it is a very, very short piece of a long and distinguished uh, uh, effort in life, but uh, here we are. Dr. Stern is the founder, is a founding member of Abitex Board of Directors, and she has served as president and CEO since December 1st of 1997. The founding board presented Dr. Stern with the challenge of, in, of ensuring the Abitex Foundation fulfill its mission to provide unique and critically needed international leadership for expediting the development and implementation of advanced diagnostic tools for improved prevention, early detection, and treatment of prostate cancer. Dr. Stern has provided leadership for and participated in numerous scientific committees, advisory groups, academic workshops, and conferences in the United States and throughout the world. She also has served as an ex expert witness in briefings and formal hearings held by the United States Congress, senior officials of government, including United States President's Cancer Panel, industry, the media, 
and the general public. Boston Business Journal chose Dr. Stern as one of the women of influence for 2016. This is a very, very short part of this distinguished woman's life. And she, she's going to be brief tonight. But what you're going to hear is so, so important to, to share. Uh, I hope that when you hear uh, that you'll take to heart what you're going to learn and share it with your friends and family. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Fana Stern. First of all, I want to thank uh, Newweb uh, um, Area Conference of NACP. And in particular, I want to, to thank leader, uh, leaders of uh, Brockton NACP, uh, leaders of Brockton delegation to the State House for the opportunity to serve this community that has disproportionate uh, rate of prostate cancer mortality compared to the rest of the state. Given the fact that our state has universal health care, it is particularly disturbing and deeply troubling to me that areas like Brockton have such unacceptably high mortality. And it is important for me that we engage every uh, aspect of Brockton community in order to battle this disease. That I'm so grateful um, for everyone who is present here. Also, I cannot help thinking about uh, a similar relatively small event that we had about um, a year or two ago. And at that event, there was a very prominent um, uh, uh, actress present who was one of the original champions and uh, uh, founding founders of AIDS movement. Uh, she walked into the room in the 80s, and she walked in the room and she saw about the same number of people we have today. And she said, oh, wow, this looks like AIDS movement at the beginning. Prostate cancer impacts just as many uh, men, if not, than AIDS. Uh, it impacts more men than breast cancer impacts women. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. And yet, and yet, awareness and research funding are lagging far behind compared to AIDS and breast cancer. We are here, our mission to change that. My, in, in my career is symbolic of that because I was the head of diagnostic imaging research branch at the National Cancer Institute, leading international programs in uh, breast cancer imaging, uh, digital mammography, uh, breast MRI, um, precision uh, biopsy, image-guided precision biopsy, uh, and right in the mid-90s, when I was in the midst of all these programs creating what is a standard of care today in breast cancer, my father was, uh, my, my, my father's prostate cancer was missed in one of the leading hospitals in Massachusetts uh, that we are so proud of, of this hospital in Massachusetts, but by one of the best experts. And he was not diagnosed with prostate cancer until he had procedure for benign disease and uh, routine pathologic tissue analysis showed cancer. Of course, I would never ever forget. I was trained at Mass General. I was on faculty at Mass General at Harvard Medical School So before I went to NCI. And I would never forget the call from uh, Mass General from a pathologist saying, you know, Faye, your, your, your father does not have benign prostate hypertrophy. Your father has prostate cancer. For about half an hour, I stopped being physician. I stopped, I lost my ability to think as a physician. 
The only thing I could hear was my father had prostate cancer. My dad had prostate cancer and very close to them, very close to my mother and my father. And But then, a couple of hours later, when I actually regained my ability to think, I contacted my father physician, and my father, as a urologist, told me, look, this is the kind of prostate cancer that is not life-threatening. My father was about 64 at that time, about my age now. And uh, um, that's not the kind of prostate cancer that is going to likely kill your father or even likely to cause symptoms. And then I, I, I heard what he said, and I went, my goodness, I'm talking to one of the best physicians in the world in this area. This physician did not have diagnostic tools in order to determine before he did surgery on my father for benign disease, to determine if my father had cancer. And I started looking at the state because I was so much focused, my career was so much focused on breast cancer, and I started looking at what was happening in prostate cancer that one of the best physicians in the world did not diagnose my father in a timely fashion before he had procedure that my, my, my father probably shouldn't have had. And when I realized the state of prostate cancer diagnostics, I, it was shocking to me. First and foremost, that I realized that men did not have ima life safe imaging tools similar to mammography for women. And the entire care for prostate cancer was blind. There were no imaging tools to properly diagnose prostate cancer, to look at its location, to guide biopsies of uh, all the procedures, biopsy treatment, all of it was blind, based on guesses, not based on precision diagnostics. So I actually, within a year, I changed the focus of my career from breast cancer to prostate cancer to make sure that men would have similar diagnostic tools, precision diagnostic tools that women have, that were well in the development and by now standard. So in 1997, um, as a consequence, we created Admita Foundation because even with my track record, track record of my distinguished colleagues at the National Cancer, Can Cancer Institute, we could not convince Joyga with, with our uh, colleagues at, in academic community who lead their field. We could not jointly convince National Cancer Institute to invest into uh, advancement of diagnostic tools for prostate cancer, including imaging. So we created Admitech Foundation to provide the kind of leadership that has not, did not exist at this point, at that time in 1997, and still does not exist at the federal level. So we've been proud to be at the forefront of the development of precision diagnostics for prostate cancer globally, internationally, and nationally, and uh, to essentially start changing standard of prostate cancer care, and most importantly, to end blind, to blind, uh, blind approach to patient, patient care. Right by now, we pioneered um, uh, imaging such as MRI, for example, which is very precise in um, figuring out who has prostate cancer, who does not have prostate cancer, whose prostate cancer is dangerous, whose prostate cancer is not, who needs biopsy, who doesn't, who needs treatment, who doesn't. And uh, um, actually, we would never, by now, every major August uh, clinical uh, organization in this country, particularly academic clinic organization, accepted uh, high precision MRI as a part of standard care. We essentially effectively ended blind care. It would never have been possible without support of Massachusetts legislature, uh, uh, include particularly uh, Representative Cassidy, Representative Cronin, and many other people Senator Brady, 
um, uh, Representative Dubois um, worked on the allegation leads this effort. These are the uh, um, leaders of legislature that made it possible for us to get funding for clinical trial and to first to create MRI, then molecular imaging of prostate cancer, and then, and then to look at precision diagnostics much more broadly. Why is it so critical and why we are focused so much on precision diagnostics? Because precision diagnostics is as critical not only for early detection and treatment, but for elimination of disparity. If we look at breast cancer, by improving early detection for breast cancer, in early 1990s, we had unacceptable disparities in mortality between black and white women in breast cancer. Unacceptable. Right now, this development of uh, uh, digital mammography, breast MRI, precision image-guided biopsies, and trans this made it possible for us to transition treatment from radical mastectomy, radical surgery, to minimally invasive intervention. So women are not as scared to be diagnosed of, of breast cancer because they know their body do not have to be deformed. So if course what is predictable, their compliance with screening can improve. By now, over the last several years, the uh, um, di uh, disparities in mortality between black and, black and white women are gone. Early detection is a great equalizer. By the same token, we are facing unacceptable disparity today in mortality in black and white men. Why is it important? Uh, so first of all, it is critical for elimination in disparities in mortality, but just as important, we need to address another issue. When men, including black, Hispanic, Latino men, have higher risk of dying of prostate cancer, they also have a higher risk of, of having unnecessary procedures such as biopsy and treatment. So precision diagnosis, diagnostics makes it possible not only to improve early detection, but to exactly tell us which men, black, white, any other color, should have biopsies and what men should not have biopsies, what men uh, should have treatment and what men should not have treatment. It's, part it's of particular importance for black men because of the general disparities in mortality it's, it, would, it is very, and without precision diagnostics, it's very difficult to find a physician who would dare not to do radical surgery on a black man with prostate cancer just by sheer, by based on sheer statistics. And what we started happening as the result of our campaign is we educated black men that they must demand first screening, secondly, precision diagnostic tools such as MRI and other uh, blood tests so that their physician will have, enough, will have enough information to determine whether or not they need biopsy, whether or not they need treatment. So that's why our focus is so much on, on one hand on saving lives, on the other hand of improving quality of lives and preventing unnecessary procedures that may potentially decrease quality of life. Furthermore, we are very actively developing not only precision diagnostics, but also um, exactly essentially what we did for our breast cancer. If we have precision diagnostics, if we can diagnose prostate cancer very early, we do not need to jump this radical surgery that has uh, that decreases a man's quality of life. We can have image-guided, image image essentially lumpectomy equivalent for men when we remove only small part of tissue containing cancer as opposed to doing radical surgery. So that's basically um, our focus and our mission. Um, I, would like to, uh, I would like to ask right now people who are present here today, 
how many of you actually had uh, ever abnormal, how many of you had screening for prostate cancer? Please raise your hands. Thank you. How many of you had screening that was uh, worrisome for your physicians? Please uh, raise your hands. Okay. Yes. When your physician expressed concern about the results of your screening, how many of you had situations when screening was suspicious? Got it. Uh, can you please share with us your experience around abnormal screening and how many options were offered to you by your physician? Can we have perhaps... Uh, in my case, I, I unbeknownst to me, I, I forgot why I was tested, but for whatever reason, my doctor said I had a high PSA number. And I had been working out, drinking an extra lot of fluid. And I was going to the bathroom a lot because I was drinking probably upwards of 64 ounces of water a day. So that was making me go to the bathroom a lot. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that, I guess the more you go to the bathroom, that rises, makes my numbers go up. I don't know. But in any event, um, so I had to go to see a specialist mm -hmm. for that. So, but when I went to go see her, uh, my numbers were high, but then when I went to go see her, she was like, it's fine. So I, it was, the numbers were high, but when I went to go see the specialist, she said everything was fine. So. I, I'm good. And then she said, well, you don't have to come back and see me. I said, no, I want to come back and see you uh, in a, in, in, like within like six months just to make sure. So she was like, you sure? I'm like, yeah, I want to just make sure everything was okay because I, you know, I, it didn't sit well with me, but I just want to make sure that everything was good. And then I did and everything was fine. So. Okay. Uh, can I please ask you a couple of questions? Sure. Okay. First of all, thank you so much for sharing your story, personal story with us. I know I never take it for granted when men are talking about their experience with prostate cancer uh, screening or any other related issues. Um, do you know the Do you know the name of testing that you underwent for prostate cancer screening? No. You do not. No. It's called PSA screening. Do you know the level of PSA screening? Do you know its level in your blood? You do not. This is something that, as Mayor Carpenter pointed out, is extremely important for you and everyone, and, to, and everyone else to know. And I'm really glad because I hope he will call back your expert and to ask for your level. And why level of PSA is so important? Because if your level is less than one, may I ask how old you are? 50. 50. Uh, may I ask if you have history of prostate cancer in your family? No. Got it. So, uh, for first of and foremost, for black men and any other high-risk men, testing should be started at 40. Secondly, men, if your if your doctor does not offer you testing, screening, you need to ask for it. You were lucky. Your your physician offered you testing. Okay. Secondly. After screening, you must know your number. If it is less than one, you are at low risk, and probably that's what happened, that you, your number was less than one, uh, and you were determined to be at very low risk of prostate cancer. Now, if you are, if your PSA is less than one, you just need to, just as another precaution, to have screening every two to four years. If your level is between one and three, you need to discuss with your physician uh, the importance of annual screening, okay? Uh, at least one to two years. If your level is climbing up to three and above, you need to discuss with your physician if you need to have biopsy and, and according to recent standard of care, MRI, to determine if biopsy is necessary. So less than one, 
your risk is low, you can get screening two to four years. If your level is one to three, you need to get screening every year and to watch if your PSA level is rising. If your PSA level is becoming closer to three, you need to discuss with your physician whether or not you, sh you should have other molecular diagnostic blood tests uh, currently available or MRI in order to determine if you need biopsy. Uh, does, even, does anyone have questions about what, he, what I just said? It is critically important for you to not only demand PSA testing, because every black man is at high risk, starting at the age of 40, but also to know your level so that you, you will be in charge of your care. This is critical. There is all kinds of controversy out, the, out there based on federal guidelines about PSA screening. All of this con controversy is not applicable to men at high risk. Uh, black men, including Hispanic, his, uh, Hispanic Latino men, uh, men of any color who are 50 and older, and men with family history of prostate cancer. These are men who, um, uh, men with family history, men with uh, black skin must have uh, PSA testing starting at 40 in order to have a chance to save their lives. Any questions about what I just said? Yes, please. Uh, can you please come, do you mind coming to the front of the room? Or is this microphone working? Well, yeah, that's, that's the cable. That's the cable line. Oh, okay. <laughs> because we want to hear your question, all of us. Thank you. Okay. You said biopsy or MRI, yeah. either way of detecting. So I was just trying to find out which one would come Correct. first. Great question. Thank you so much. Uh, at this point, based on the current level of knowledge we have and based on the current evidence of data we have, I would never recommend any man to have biopsy without MRI first. For several reasons. First, if MRI is normal, and it will be normal in about um, roughly 30% uh, of men uh, with abnormal uh, screening or PSA more than one, and right off the bat, this man will not need to have biopsy. Secondly, if MRI does show abnormality, then biopsy will be guided exactly to, to, the, to the area of abnormality. What happens with blind biopsies? With blind biopsy, if it is, if it is not without MRI, let's say exactly with ultrasound. Ultrasound is blind, so cancer, our cell can see only prostate. So what essentially uh, is a standard of care is needle goes during biopsy, and it's expensive, it's an invasive procedure. 4% of men develop sepsis, which is life-threatening uh, infectious disease. And uh, needle goes randomly and cannot analyze more than 0.5% of the prostate tissue Prostate is, is the last organ in a human body when we are doing blind biopsy. So you can be sure, and I'm not saying this lightly, because when my uh, husband's uh, PSA test, screening test, was abnormal, guess what I did? I sent him for MRI first. MRI showed some abnormalities. MRI guided precision biopsy was done, and thank God he did not have prostate cancer and he did not need to have any further procedure, like treatment, okay? So thank you for your question. Any other questions? Please. Do you mind also joining us here? I think you had a question. Um, you know, I've been going to the doctor every year 
And when I see my doctor, he keeps on telling me, well, you know, you're fine. But I really don't know what my ESA level is. And I'm, I'm an educated, you know, black man. Uh, so my question is, since, you know, you're really here, um, you know, I mean, excuse me, okay? So when I go to see my doctor, all he does is to use his finger and do that thing there, and he says, you're fine. Is there something else he should be doing? Absolutely. Um, uh, digital, what we call digital rectal exam that you just described yeah. uh, is an important part of physical exam. Unfortunately, uh, because of the location of the prostate, by the time physical exam actually by the time physicians feel something on physical exam, it is more frequently than not too late. That's why blood test is absolutely critical because it is much more sensitive for detection of prostate cancer. It is not specific, but it is not supposed to be specific. It's a screening test to determine, to, to determine the risk. So you need to ask your doctor one, for a blood test, blood test PSA, and secondly, to always know your level and to remember less than one, you can do screening two to, two to four years, every two to four yeah. years. One to three every year and to watch if it is rising. If it gets to three, you need to discuss with your doctor possibility of MRI before biopsy. So you will have MRI guided biopsy. Thank you, doctor. Uh, yes, you have a question. How do we get uh, primary physicians to um, uh, present the ex examination to all men, not just black men, but all men? And working in a hospital, I know certain labs, insurances don't want to pay for lab tests. So how do we sure. get all those people involved? Great question. Thank you so much again for your question. And uh, um, first of all, uh, the answer to this question is actually relatively simple, but several fold. One, PSA screening for prostate cancer is covered by every insurance company. It is also extremely inexpensive. It's 20 to 50 bucks, okay? So it's covered by every insurance company because when insurance, based on federal guidelines that but again, screening that nobody else could even understand, particularly, and we were very worried about high-risk men, uh, and we, what we got as a result of federal uh, guidelines against screening, uh, increasing disparities in mortality, predictably, okay? Everywhere, including here in Massachusetts. But um, I would like to share a story I would never forget about, because, Physicians do not always, based on federal guidelines, physicians do not offer uh, this test to every man, okay? I remember how you, the very first time came to Brockton in December 2015, you shared your story that your physician never told you about PSA screening, and you got pretty upset about it, okay? And, uh, and we found out that this was the case with 50% of black men, 50 and older, uh, that we randomly um, uh, questioned here in Brockton. We had a um, survey. Out of 14 men, 15 and above black men, seven men never heard from their doctors about, about uh, a PSA screening, so this is not unusual. But I do want to share with you um, a very important story. First of all, my response to questions, how do you get this test? You ask your doctor and you do not stop asking your doctor for PSA screening. I'm talking to men, uh, about men right now, until you get this test. Second, because this test is covered by insurance, okay? Secondly, okay, if you will give me just a moment. Uh, secondly, the story that I want to share, I will never forget. We, one of our, um, uh, prostate cancer awareness activity, 
um, program is with Concord Baptist Church, which is a very large black church in Newcomb, uh, in Oka County. And uh, the founder of the church, a very large church, a very large congregation, um, and the founder and senior pastor of that church um, learned from us about ESA screening. And one year later, during our second annual event uh, in that church, he went to the microphone and he said that based on what he learned, he asked his, his physician for PSA screening, and his physician said no. His response was very simple. He said, either you will give me this blood test, or you will be my physician no longer. And he said it in front of the entire congregation. In, in, it was important for me to see a prominent member of the black community making that statement because he's a role model in that community. And I think it is, it, 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 <laughs> that's what I would have done if I knew that I needed certain tests and my physician would refuse to do the test, I would find another physician who will give me the test that I know I need. You wanted, you had, uh, you raised your arm again? So what happens if men do not know about that? That's the point of events like that. That's why I'm very happy to see Mark Linda here, because I know the message from this, uh, from this kind of event is going to be transmitted to many more men that we can possibly bring into a single room in Brockton. You also had additional questions. mentioned the fact that Brockton is very high um, and so when you look at the makeup of Brockton um, and and what it comprised what the city is comprised of now obviously we all know those of us I, I was raised here I went to school here um, so the makeup I'm sorry so when you look at how the city of Brockton is, is made up and you look at the, the different nationalities we have in this city, um, um, the different, you know, we have multi, this is a very multicultural city that we live in. Um, and obviously we have, you know, we go from the bottom, you know, it's a middle class city at, at the end of the day. But I'm wondering if that has anything to do with uh, the level of care that the people are actually receiving. Um, and everyone is not, everyone's not fortunate to have grade A health care. Um, and so does that have any effect on obviously what these doctors are offering their patients? So going back to your question as to some of these people who aren't asking um, and the fact that these doctors aren't offering. Should it be a standard procedure as right. well? Yeah. You would have thought that this should be a standard procedure for every man screening for prostate cancer, a simple blood test, but it is not. If it was a standard part of procedure, they would not have been beating on the door of Jerry Cassidy and Rep Cronin and many other politicians uh, to have prostate cancer research and awareness campaign in the state where everyone has access to care. But let me share you, I like sharing stories, uh, as you probably noticed. Um, I, w I ended up at one of the uh, events, I ended up sitting next to CEO of one of the major insurance companies in the state. And he told me with great pride, he said, oh my goodness, Faye, my PSA test level was then one. I said, okay. Uh, your doctor offered you PSA? No, 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 my doctor did not offer me PSA. I was actually quite pissed off. 
I went through my annual, uh, um, my annual exam, I got all the results back, and I got all the results, and I did not see PSA among them. So I called my doctor, and I asked, why did I not see PSA, te PSA test? And the doctor said, I did not order it. So this man did not stop until he got his PSA testing. And then it was one, and he was very happy. And that's what every man should demand, in my judgment. The interesting part of it was when this man suggested that I talk to a clinical director of that insurance company in order to um, make sure that, like him, everyone had a, a PSA testing, a part of standard care. So I had a meeting with my staff, this clinical director of that insurance company, and what I was told is, we are not going to do that because we are concerned about PSA testing and she shared concerns that had no scientific basis, particularly for high-risk men. And there was, in, in spite of one hour conversation in which we provided every evidence that this person uh, needed in order to make informed decision about policy, it did not, this conversation led nowhere. She started and she ended this conversation with the decision, we will not be automatically offering tests in this insurance company. And I just stood there, he, I just, I was stricken by the hypocrisy of it. CEO is demanding the test for himself, making sure that he knows his test and his result, but his insurance company wouldn't offer it to everyone who is, um, who is covered by the insurance company he is ahead of. That's why we critically need awareness and education campaign, and that's why I hope that you will share this information with your families, with your communities, with your fathers, with your brothers, with everyone, so next time we will have more people in the room and they will hear a similar message. But today, unless men demand PSA testing, they may not get it. So every man who knows to be at risk cannot stop until they will get uh, tested for PSA. Yes. Uh, please join us in the front so that uh, I will not be getting from the position that Phyllis wanted me to have here. Uh, yes. You know, sometimes I really wonder if uh, uh, prostate cancer should not be, uh, I mean, a, a lot more publicity should not be, should be done. Uh, basically, if, if there was a way we could heighten uh, prostate cancer awareness in high schools because the reality is when you talk about breast cancer, NBA, NFL, they wear pink as a symbol of breast cancer. But if you ask the average boy or the average man what's the color of prostate cancer, we don't even know. But I think, you know, really, in your position, uh, one of the things perhaps you all should advocate or we should advocate is really make sure that, you know, it is taught in high school, uh, you know, maybe senior year or something because, uh, you know, something needs to be done. Um, I actually agree. Thank you so much for your suggestion. Uh, and although 17 years old or 16 years old, are far away from 40 years old when prostate cancer needs to be, when we need to start screening. What I observed is how many young people would come to our awareness event and then would make a commitment to talk to their fathers or grandfathers or older brothers about the critical importance of testing. So starting this awareness at, at, at young age would be great, particularly in a place like Brockton, Claire where mortality is so high and must be 
and it takes a long time to die of prostate cancer. And um, it is um, not when you have a little disease, but uh, um, in terms of age. And I think it is really important to start educating uh, uh, high school seniors about this disease to the extent possible, if not immediately for them, but immediately for their families. Please. Good evening, it's good to see you, Dr. Stern. Two years ago, um, I joined the committee to be a foot soldier uh, for the community in terms of uh, doing the educational awareness along with a lot of persons you probably already introduced, including the man who just spoke. Um, he was on a team, I believe, and was gonna approach it from a grassroots uh, level. But with what he said, uh, piggybacking on what he said, my question for you begins, since the two years time, and we've had the involvement with the Brockton Hospital and with the Good Samaritan Hospital, hopefully with the Neighborhood Health Center, first question is, has the needle moved? Have we had, um, do we have any numbers about anyone coming in to be tested, or do we have any numbers? Have we moved the needle in two years? That's my first question, and then quickly the other. That's a great question to have. Um, as much funding as we are, as Massachusetts legislature has been able to afford to give us, it's not sufficient for coherent scientific study to determine if prostate cancer mortality has been impacted. Now, it also will take much, much longer to look all the mortality studies takes a long time. But there is immediate quantitative parameters that we can study as, as long as we have appropriate funding. And that is how many men today know about, uh, how many men know about prostate cancer screening? What percentage of men actually undergoing screening? What percentage of men know about diagnostic tools like MRI or other blood tests, urinary tests that can precede MRI, so that they can ask it of their physician? Okay, so we would love to, have to undertake such a study in Brockton, provided that we will get sufficient, uh, uh, sufficient funding to um, have manpower mm. and scientific expertise in order to conduct such a study. We would love to have, we would love to have an opportunity. We actually have a study design, now we need funding. But it is a critical question to look. But if I were to observe, simply personal observation, what happened between first awareness, first small meeting in 2015, with leaders of Rockman and AACP, to the large MLK breakfast, 2016 uh, that followed prostate cancer event. Uh, you know, when we found that 50% of black men did not even know anything about PSA testing. Mm -hmm. And we said, well, tell you what, community educators, community leaders, responses I'm getting today are very different. But once again, we in, in order to do actually study and to get quantitative data, we need a Okay. Funding. Funding exactly. okay, with that said, and um, the gentleman talked about educating from a um, lower level age, starting in the high school, and um, <clears throat> he alluded to colors, like everybody representing breast cancer with pink. So maybe that's an idea that he's uh, giving us um, for further um, demonstration and education for families here in Broughton. Now, what I would like to see to happen other than our grassroots efforts that we're making and having discussions. Um, I would like us to see our group in more cultural centers, but on behalf of Admi Tech and all the other funding sources that uh, feed into our problem here under the auspices of the Centers for Disease Control, can we have an obligation with our mayor, with other persons. We need billboards 
that would be a great thing. We, I mean, we're driving in and we're seeing no more drugs, blah, blah, this, blah, drug abuse. I think billboards would be very helpful. I'd like to see someone to approach Ray Ledoux. That's the person I know at the bus station uh, to do advertising on the bus station. I'd like to see the trains coming into Brockton to have some advertisement to come in. And I think that um, this advertisement in hospitals, uh, things such as this right here, could be in the hospital cafeterias that we have here in Brockton in our neighborhood health center. So that's what I'd like to see on behalf of the persons that work with you. I think you're the power base for that, for me, for my community. I understand how the men feel. I have four stage cancer myself. So therefore, I understand how critical it is to have this testing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I, I really love this idea to have high power graphics on billboards on on every appropriate in their in every appropriate area that Brockton NAACP or uh, Good Samaritan Hospital other partners would like to put essentially high power graphics that will high, highlight exactly that prostate cancer discriminates black men are two and a half times likely to die did you get tested Get, or get tested today. I love the idea. Also, if it is possible for us to talk to Mark to see if, if it is possible to do some sort of PSA uh, uh, for uh, um, your television station that reaches so many people in Brooklyn as well. So to put it on buses, to put it wherever it is appropriate, we will be happy to, pro to provide graphics and we'll be able to support it out of state funding to the extent possible. Did anyone else want to ask a question? Yeah. Yes, uh, if, you, if there are questions, uh, please, please come forward. This will be the, the, the last question uh, uh, that Dr. Stern will answer I, before I encourage you to get something to eat. And uh, I, I will ask you to uh, continue to ask uh, Dr. Stern if she's willing to talk during, during the period that they're eating or, or engage with her one-on-one. One -on -one. But Steve, yes. Yeah. Hi, Dr. Stern. Hi. I'm Leon's brother, Steve, as well. I have a question. You say. Do you mind that they see us? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But do you mind that yes. they see us? Yes. I, I have a question for you. Um, sure. You said that you have to get, people should get tested at age 40. Yes, starting at age 40. I was just curious is the disease dormant um, at an early age? Uh, great question again. Uh, if you look at, there was actually a very large study published at around 2015. Uh, it was a multiple academic centers that look at uh, black men, and they basically found that prostate cancer in black men, we're to talking about thousands and thousands of black men, prostate cancer in black men in their 40 is much smaller and much more treatable than in, in their 50s. So this is one of the sources of data why we are saying men particular black men need to start their screening at the age of uh, 40. Okay, that's the best data we have today. Okay, uh, and I believe uh, Steve wanted to. You guys are absolutely amazing. The engagement that we've had tonight uh, it tells me that you are very, very serious about your health and the health of the brothers and sisters here, here in Brockton. Uh, I, I think Dr. Stern has done a marvelous job in answering our, our, our even opening more questions to, uh, to, to the end. Thank you very much for, for, for sharing with us. At this time, I'd like you please to enjoy the food. And uh, after everyone gets a chance to have, to have the food, I'm, I'm going to uh, uh, sort of reconvene and ask if there are other questions or if Dr. Stern would like to add. So we'll just keep it going. And it's been a very serious, very serious evening. Uh, and we're very serious about what we're, the reason that we're here tonight. But we're also serious about enjoying each other's company. So at this time, let's do what we all like to do. Let's get something to eat and enjoy each other's company.